Fantastic. So our special guest today is Michelle von Eschen. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much for having me, Crystal. It's a pleasure. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started in the horror genre, Michelle. Oh, about myself. Um, I'm an American writer living in England. (laughs) Um, I got started in horror, I think, like a lot of us uh, from a pretty early age. The earliest memory, I think I've talked about it here and there on other podcasts or things, interviews. Uh, My twin sister and I, our younger sister, we had a babysitter and she was tasked with not allowing us to watch Pet Cemetery. I think it was on TV or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like the one thing she was told by our parents, don't let them watch it. I guess we really wanted to see it. Um, and she allowed us to. And I feel like ever since then, um, especially for my twin sister and I, we've just had this attraction to dark stuff. Uh, We used to have horror movie marathons. She and I on the weekends, we'd go to Blockbuster and like haunt the horror section and find something we hadn't seen. And usually like really schlocky, uh, like B movie stuff and get nachos. Yeah. And just, and just hang out. And we really bonded over our shared love of that. Brilliant. So what was the first horror story that you ever wrote? I've always written, uh, but I used to write poetry, <laughs> believe it or not, when I was when I was young. And so I, I wasn't really writing horror until I think my first novel that came out. I started writing it in 2006. Um, and that was um, like when the zombie craze was kind of getting started. And I published it in 2012. But prior to then, I had never written any stories i just got ideas uh from Mm -hmm. like zombie movies that we had watched but we weren't seeing some things in it and i i just wanted to explore ideas the movies were giving me that i wasn't seeing presented on screen um and it slowly became a very big novel called when the dead so i feel like that is probably the first horror story i ever wrote brilliant so walk us through the process of how you develop a story Oh, my husband, Jonathan, uh, were very different in that way. And so he would probably shake his head because I don't I don't really have a process. My <laughs> my process is um, I, I really write when I'm inspired, which I've been working on, like forcing myself to write more often and not chase that inspiration if you know to write anyways when i don't have it um and i tend yeah he he writes in a very linear fashion from start to finish where i jump around and like i'll get an idea for dialogue for a scene you know midway through a book um, or a story that i'm working on and then i'll jump to the end i usually have the ending before i have most of the beginning uh so i i just kind of write things as they come to me rearrange it um and then it, it slowly takes shape. Uh, I usually start with a concept that I find particularly thrilling and kind of creepy, and then build a story around that concept that I want to explore. Yeah, I don't understand um, how authors, uh, a couple of authors that I've interviewed actually have said that they start at the end um, or they start in the middle. I think it's amazing. <laughs> I, <really don't. laughs> I couldn't do that. <laughs> Yeah, it just, I think it just really depends on the story. Sometimes I guess you do know exactly where you want to end up. And kind of the fun part is like, oh, well, that's the story I want to tell. It all happens right there at the end. But how do I get there? And that's yeah. where the extra work comes in of making everything line up to meet that end. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I just kind of, I think sometimes I struggle with finding the point of view or like the exact story that I want to tell, because like I said, I often fall in love with a concept. Um, and then, and then want to write a story about that concept, but just have no plot or, you know, ideas otherwise. And so I'm like, how do I, how do I 
get the opportunity? How do I give it to myself to talk about this concept that I want to explore that I love so much? How do I get to show this to other people in a way that they'll find interesting? Um, so yeah, I think I start kind of from a weird place instead of like, Oh, this is a story I want to tell. And then I inject cool stuff into it. It's like, I've got the one really cool thing and I got to find a way to bring it to readers. I I think it's fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. So would you think that you're a pantser or a plotter? (laughs) I think I am squarely, decidedly a pantser. Um, However, there are a few projects that there's one I still haven't finished. It's a very long book um, that requires a lot of plotting, but only because the concept that I fell in love with is, is it kind of forces you to follow like a roadmap in a sense. And yeah. so if I want to write about that awesome concept, I then I'm, I'm then forced to, you know, follow the rules kind of, and, and really plan how my story fits that framework that's already built. Um, yeah. So it kind of depends. Sometimes the story forces me to be more thoughtful in my planning. Um, but usually I get away with, with just pantsing it. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your favorite horror tropes to write about? I know you mentioned zombies. Is there any others? Yeah, I started with zombies um, and I've written a lot about zombies. Like in the beginning, I have another pen name. So I currently write under Von Eschen, Michelle Von Eschen, uh, but I used to write under Michelle Kilmer. Um, and a lot of that stuff is zombie, but then I've started to kind of branch out, especially as zombies became more popular. And I started to just get more story ideas and things I wanted to explore. Um, so I think when I think about everything I've written, excuse me, um, what I'm working on now I think I write, I just write a lot about death, really. Um, I come from a large family and I've been around death a lot as I've, you know, been growing up just because we've lost Mm. family members and stuff. Both of my parents have unfortunately passed away. And, you know, my sister and I, my twin, we were very close to my mother's death. Like we had to deal with that and her estate and everything. So it's just like death has always been been a quite a big part of my life. Um, I think I use my writing, especially these days to like process the feel, those feelings, you know, that I've, that have come up that I've had to face. Um, there, the newer story I have, I wrote, uh, when there was a bird stuck in our wall in, we live in a brick house and I, I'm from America. I've never heard of that happening, but apparently it happens here in England. Um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, so was, yeah, yeah. And, and, and we weren't able to get it out and it died and it was kind of traumatizing. Um, but I wrote a really powerful story around and uh, that idea, um, that actually just came out in, in a new collection. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think death, I just write about death. I write about like human, the human experience, um, mainly around like grief and loss yeah so what's been the hardest part to write um like a difficult scene that you've ever had to write about i well i think the day that my mom passed away i got an idea for a story um it was released i think last year um on godless or maybe it was this year actually and it's called when you become a body and I, it, I think that was the hardest for me to write because it was, it's really about like how you have no time uh, when someone dies, you don't get a lot of ch- time to grieve really, or process. Like you're just forced into, especially if you're the one dealing with the estate and the funeral home and all of those things. Like, it's just this, it's like you're a cog in a machine and you're kind of thrust yeah. into the the bureaucracy and the business of it. And uh, so I think that was hard because I feel like it needed to be said because a lot of people can relate to that feeling. Um, But it was at the same time quite hard to write because it was the idea came about because my mom died. And, you know, I was, we were forced to just be a part of that whole 
that whole process and yeah yeah so can you talk about one of your most popular books and why you think it resonated with the readers I, th- I think Old Farmhouses of the North, uh, which is my, my my most recent short story collection. Um, again, I think it's it's that the way that I write, the situations I put my characters in, e- even though they are like usually quite fantastical and a bit bizarre, or sometimes even they seem maybe magical or you know just just this this opposite side of reality like reality adjacent they are still it's still all about like real human just feeling and people having to confront um difficult things in their lives even if maybe they're trying to run from them i feel like everyone who's read it they they just understand the characters um and everything since then when you become a body because so many people have suffered you know the loss of someone even if it's a pet yeah. you go through those same type of emotions um yeah so i think probably when you become a body in old farmhouses of the north they are just very much that like human element of suffering and kind of getting through things and having to confront, you know, what those types of situations, the emotions that they bring up in you. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they say there's so many stages of uh, dealing with death, don't they? Yeah, yes, the stages of grief, yeah. Yeah, I couldn't remember what it was called. I know there was stages, I know, yeah. I remember what it was called. I only but... remember because I wrote about it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Have you got any exciting projects that you're currently working on that you can share with us? I have uh, another short story collection, hopefully coming out in 2024 sometime. Um, Can't share the name, can't share. I mean, obviously, all of the stories are going to be about death in some way, just because, again, that is that tends to be what I write about. Um, And I'm working on a novella right now that's also like deeply under wraps uh again a 2024 release if everything goes well and then i have uh, um i actually got asked to write a nonfiction piece about like writer's block and so i'm pretty excited about that i have a story as well i've been asked to do for an anthology uh and that is about whether the dog dies or not, which is kind of a, a, a hot topic <laughs> in a lot of indie horror uh, pages yeah. and forums and stuff <laughs> online. So um, that'll be pretty cool to to explore that idea. And yeah, so, and like I said, I just had um, this story about this, this bird situation. Uh, the story is called The Cavity Wall that just got released uh, gosh, on the 13th of this month with uh, Books of Horror, uh, Dead Girls and Dead Things anthology. So yeah. there's there's definitely a lot going on in my writing world. It's pretty exciting. That's brilliant. That sounds yeah. very exciting. So where can we find your books? Uh, I do have um, a website. It's whenthedead.com. I don't sell them through the website, but the website has all the books and the, you know, synopsises, synopses and links to where they can be bought, whether that's Godless or Amazon. I have a couple short stories on Godless and then all the rest of my books are on Amazon. Um, Yeah. And I'm on Facebook and Instagram and just kind of, but all that stuff is linked from my website as well. So fantastic. So what advice would you give to aspiring writers who want to break into the horror genre? I would say the one thing I've learned the most is there is not one right way to be a writer. (laughs) There's not one correct path um, that all you need is an idea and the want to put it down um, on paper or on screen, and that even industry, you know, greats, they will have a way that they got where they are, but there's so many variables that impact success. 
uh, that you can't just do things the way somebody else has done them and expect that same result for yourself. So you just really have to stay true to your ideas. You need to be able to take criticism. Um, I am definitely an author who reads their reviews. I think yeah. that if you can handle it, it is a way to grow. It's one of the one of the best ways that I've learned what I could be better at in my writing, it has helped me improve. So I don't, I don't really agree with authors who should say you should never, you know, they say you should never read your reviews at all. I just think that that is, if you're writing for an audience and you want your audience to care about what you write, you need to care about what they think about your writing. So yeah, but those, yeah. that would be my, my little morsels of advice. I think with the reviews, it's uh, I think it's the way of once you see the reviews, it's it's kind of like you need to work out which are keyboard warriors, and which is constructive criticism. Yeah, exactly. People are going to have opinions; they are entitled to them, you know, and you need to take them with a, a grain of salt. But in there, there will be truths about where you can improve, or you know, also those moments of praise. Like if I hadn't read my reviews like they are the things that keep me going sometimes because we all have doubt and I, and it hits me a lot, like, but there will I'll suddenly get a review that's super positive and it will remind me like, okay, I'm not half bad. This is, you know, I should keep going. My ideas are interesting to at least one person. Like that's yeah. just so cool to me. So. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time, Michelle. It's been absolutely fantastic yeah. having you on the show. Um, it's brilliant. Thank you very yeah, much. I just thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. You're very welcome.